guys, this is Mike from Tech Respect. Today we're going to be setting up an FTP server and then connecting to it using active mode and then using passive mode. FTP always uses two TCP connections. The first one's called the command connection, the second one's called the data connection. In active mode, after you connect to the server, the server will then connect back to the client. And in passive mode, after you connect to the server, this, the client will then make a second connection back to the server. So let's dive into our virtual machines I've set up and see how we can configure it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go into a virtual machine that I have set up here to be our FTP server. Uh, we're going to go grab the uh, IP address here and remote into it for the first time. Okay, so here on the server you're going to click Manage and go to Add Roles and Services and go to Server Roles You'll choose Web IIS, and you don't need any features or web server roles. We just need the role services of FTP. Okay. Now that's going to take a minute to finish as it's uh, enabling um, FTP on here. And in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about um, the basic connection that's going to be made from uh, any FTP connection, which is essentially the first connection is always going to be the FTP client is going to establish a connection to the FTP server on port 21. Um, after that, it's going to send a command whether or not it wants to start in active mode or whether or not it wants to uh, work in passive mode. But regardless, we're going to need port 21 open um, for our FTP server. So if we take a look at what the uh, firewall rules are, this is kind of interesting that we'll go and monitor which uh, firewall rules are actually available on a clean build. And as you can see here, out of the box, there actually is no um, port 21 open on the server. Okay, so uh, FTP has uh, finished being installed. Let's go down and take a look again at that firewall setting. Okay, so Taking a look now at the rules, we can now monitor the firewall and notice that there are actually new FTP rules that get added. So this first one is the uh, connection that they all need in order to uh, start the process on port 21. This second rule is for uh, passive connections, which we'll do later. And the, this third one is an SSL traffic, which we will set up, uh, which we don't actually need for this demo. So. Let's even go to the inbound rules, and for now, we will just disable the uh, two that we don't need. Okay, so we'll just keep open on the local firewall for uh, incoming connections on port 21. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add a user that we're gonna use specifically for just the FTP connections from the client. So we'll go and we'll go to computer management, and it's gonna bring up the ability to go into local users Let's just create a new user, FTP user. Okay, and we'll go and create that user and use it uh, when we're configuring our site. To set up our FTP site, you will go and just pick a directory that it will run under. Uh, I've made uh, this folder with a few files in it called My FTP, and we go ahead and we'll launch into the Internet Information Services or IIS Manager. And uh, when you go down here, you just go into sites and add FTP site. So we'll just call it whatever we want, call it my FTP. And then we'll go to that folder that we just created. So mine was in sites, my FTP. We're going to do the defaults of port 21, but we're going to go no SSL for this particular demo. We'll do authentication of basic of that user that we created. We'll give them read and write permissions. After that, uh, I will go in here and actually give permissions to that user since they're not a admin. So we'll just say security add FTP user. And then we will just allow them for everything. And after that, we'll stop and start the FTP service using the command line just to make sure that the um, changes were taken.
After that, the only thing that we really need to do is open up the port on the outside, which is, again, going to be to come back to our um, Azure window here. This would be you going into your own router or on Azure. You just go and configure your inbound rules. This one's going to be called FTP, and it will be that any port can come in and needs to connect to 21 to allow that. So we did this earlier on the Windows firewall, and this is going to be from the outside firewall. So after that, we now should be able to connect to our FTP server um, in uh, either active mode or passive mode. To configure the FTP client, I've added a new machine here on um, Azure for uh, testing that. So let's go and get its IP address, um, log into it for the first time, and configure it in order to start communicating with our FTP server. So let's take a look at the, uh, the sequence diagram for active mode. The way that it's going to work is that the connection is going to be made on port 21 to the FTP server, just like uh, we set up. And when the connection is made, the client's going to pass in a command called port with the port number that it would like to uh, set up as the data channel. So this will then tell the FTP server to connect back into the client on that port. And that will be where all the data gets um, sent through. So all the commands will come on port 21 and all the data will come in on the port that is specified by the client. So what this means is that we're going to have to open up a few ports on the client side in order to let the FTP server connect back in. So let's go um, pick a few ports for that. So let's do inbound rule. We'll add a new rule. We'll say port TCP. Let's pick, um, I don't know, let's pick just a few ports, say 2016 through 2020 that we will open up for uh, callbacks into our, um, into our FTP and we'll say FTP active. We'll just call them our FTP active ports. Okay, so there they are. So now we'll go up to Azure and open up the exact same ports. So we go to network security, choose our machine and go to the inbound security rules for that. So add rules, FTP active. We'll say that if it comes in on port 20, that it will be allowed to go to 2016 through 2020. So this source port ensures that it actually is coming in as part of an FTP connection. Okay, so that rule has um, been added to the firewall. So now let's go back to actually test our connection. I've installed the FileZilla client uh, to make the FTP connection. So we're gonna go up and set it up for active mode. In settings, you just will go down and choose active and no allow fallback. And then in active, we're going to go and configure those ports that we had set up as the only ones that we are open to having the connection come back to. So when we make our port call, we should be passing in something in this range um, for the callback. And because I'm on Azure, I actually do need to... Um, I do need to put in my, my client address, which is 4121. Um, I'm also going to go turn on logging so that we can actually see the commands. So we'll just go ahead and say, put it in the root of C and say, okay. And now let's go and uh, make our connection. So we'll put in the IP address of our server and the user. And there's our connection. So looking at um, our file here, we made the call to port right here. 40.112.187.1, which is um, where the connection will come back to. And right here, the way that this uh, number is, is that you take this and multiply it times 256 and add on um, the last tuple. So we would just go doing a quick check. 256 times 7 plus 224 
equals 2016. So um, once that port command is done, then the connection uh, will come back from the server and that's how we uh, were able to get the directory and the files uh, after that. So now we're done with the active mode. All right, so that was active mode. Let's clean up our firewall and then set up passive mode where the client will make a second connection back into the server and doesn't have to open up any ports. So looking through our rules here, we have this FTP active that we had created. We'll disable that on the client, making it so that you cannot make connections back to 2016 to, through 2020 like we had set up at the, um, at the client. Likewise, we'll go in here and we'll shut it off at the router level as well. So client and delete that FTP active record that we had allowed in before on the client side. So this image here shows what a passive situation was. Likewise, in the active mode, the port 21 is opened up, the FTP connection starts from the client there. But instead of passing in the word port and a port for the FTP server to call back on, the server will actually initialize the port that should be called back from the FTP client. So the server picks a port that it has open and sends it back to the client and then the client makes the data port back on uh, on that connection so that um, that's how the the two tcp connections have and notice that now the ports that need to be open are all on the server side so in order to do that let's go in and um, set up IIS to accept TCP connections on a small range of ports. But looking at the inbound rules, you'll remember that when we first installed FTP, that there's a passive rule here. It opens up connections from TCP from 1,024 all the way through 65,535. That is too big of a range. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and narrow that in with defined ports that we are comfortable opening up. So to do that, we're just gonna do port and let's just open up 100 ports so we'll do 2000 through 2100 as the 100 ports that you're allowed to come back and make FTP passive connections to so we'll allow the connection and we'll create the rule giving it a name of FTP passive so now scrolling up to the top you see we have a new rule on IIS We're going to go and configure it to have ports 2000 through 2100 available for passive connections. And we again have to put in our IP address that was given to us because we are an Azure machine that's actually publicly available. So before we leave this server, let's go ahead and uh, do net stop, net start on FTP service just to make sure that all the uh, changes take place. So net, and we'll let that stop. Okay, one last thing before we get over to the client. Let's go and look at our security group here for the server and set its inbound rules as well. So we have the connection on port 21 that we've always had open. Now we're going to open up one more rule. We'll call it FTP server or FTP passive. And uh, we'll say that any incoming port is allowed if it's going from 2000 to 2100. Okay, our new inbound rule is created. Let's go check it out at the client side by logging in and seeing if we can connect so going over to the client, we're going to launch FileZilla. And this time under settings, we're going to change it from active to passive. So we're going to do passive. We're not even going to allow it to fall back. We're just going to say, okay. So putting in the server name, connecting just like before. Put in the right password. And now we're connected. So uh, looking at the logs, after we were um, let in, we actually sent a passive request instead of a port. And that went to 10.1.0.4 with 
seven. So let's see here. Let's do that. 256 times seven plus 208, which is at port 2000, which was the first of our 100 uh, ports that we opened up. So now we're all connected with uh, passive mode and we can decide which is best for us. In summary, for FTP, you always start with port 21. That'll be your command connection. And then after that, you configure it for active mode or passive mode for your data connection. I hope you found this video educational. And if you liked it, throw up a like or send me a message. Thanks for watching.